just reviewing a student's project here. Um, the student would like to have these columns appear more like branches on a tree. And so we're going to show you how to do that as well as kind of giving some other critiques on some Revit modeling things like how to fix these windows kind of poking through the roof and a few other things like that. So for these columns, Revit actually has two ways to model a column. So if we go up to structure and we go to columns here, we can actually do a vertical column or a slanted column right here. And so what we're going to try to do here is we're going to maybe come up here and maybe have a few kind of branches come off this column here, um, something like that. So let's do this. Um, get rid of my drawing there. All right. So if let's go to our floor plan view. And I'm just going to extend this crop box a little bit, and then I'm just going to turn it off. And so we have this column here. One thing I'd kind of recommend just by looking at this, and we can actually see this by turning on the underlay. So I'm going to go underlay level two. And so we can kind of see our roof here. And so our roof overhang actually isn't much more than this uh, floor system here. I think one thing that would probably help with this is to actually create more of an overhang. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to bring this column in um, maybe a little bit on a 45 degree angle here. And I think if by extending the overhang a little bit more, it'll just kind of allow the column to be a little bit more dramatic when it comes to how it sits here. Um, I'm going to do another thing here. I'm going to hit WT on the keyboard and that's just window tiled. You can actually access this by going to view and go up here to tiled views here. And I just find it's sometimes helpful to show this in 2D and 3D. So let's start here. Let's go to structure and we're just going to draw some um, other columns here slanted. And right now we only have the I beam in here. So let's go to insert load Autodesk family. And this is a cloud based uh, uh, family library that Autodesk introduced a couple um, versions ago. Let's go to structural columns and we're going to go to HSS round. Uh, HSS round column here. Load it in. Um, when I bring in columns, I like to bring in a few different sizes because uh, this roof isn't that big. I think a three inch might be nice, but I'll, maybe I'll bring in a three inch, a 3.5, maybe a four and a five. And I'm just kind of picking some random numbers. Um, there and I'm using the control button on my keyboard to select more than one. I'm just going to select all these columns right now. This is just an architectural column, not really a big deal, but I'm just going to make this a structural column. Select all instances, an entire project, and we're just going to change. Uh, ooh, we might have to remodel those. All right, let's just remodel them. Uh, so let's go to beam or sorry, column. And let's place some um, three and a half inch round columns here. Um, so this one's going to place um, our first click will be level one, negative eight. Let's make this zero. And our level two will be our second click. I might have to do that in reverse. There we go. Um, so I'm going to make this first one uh, vertical. And I'm just going to place that in the same locations of these other columns. Increasing the overhang good because I think you might want to do a column like right here and right here to help support the exterior of this. Uh, but just deal with this as we have it here. Um, all of these columns you can see in the 3D are actually going below. So I'm just going to select them all here. We're going to change the top level to level two and change our bottom level to be, let's just make it negative one foot. I just sometimes like doing that just so it it's uh, out of or it just goes a little bit below our slab or if we have some sort of elevation change. We're going to select all these architectural columns, just delete them. And let's do some slanted stuff here. So we have this column here. It doesn't really line up any, with anything, which is I think is good. And so let's go back to column. We're going to go slanted. We're going to click once here and maybe once over here. And it doesn't like our top and bottom base. So let's just change this to be negative nine. 
And let's turn off 3D snapping here. That probably fixes it a little bit. Well, we're gonna fix the orientation of these a little bit after. Do something like that as an example. So you can see here we have these three columns kind of going all over the place. I'm gonna pull this view over. We're gonna go change this and click our left orientation on our, our 3D cube there. And let's actually raise these up so that we're at the level of our roof. I'm just hitting the tab button to make sure that goes up. And by using the tab button here, we're disconnecting the snapping. So if it clicks up here and it's clicking on this line, if I hit tab, it'll unclick that line and allow us to have more manual control. And so this is our straight column here. Let's maybe make this straight column go level one, maybe make it go up to like, I'm gonna say seven feet, cause then it's a little bit above um, head height. And then let's grab these columns and let's make them start at seven feet as well. So now we have this um, bit of a tree like looking column. And I'll do that again once more here. Uh, we can also grab these columns and click attach top to base and it'll connect them up into that roof there like so. Now we have a bit of a tree like column. So I think what I would recommend is moving this, making this roof overhang a little bit bigger so it goes out to the edge there, um, just so that that column could be in the corner of the slab. So let's go to our back here. So let's do one of these ones in the back and I think I might change what I originally did there. So let's uh, do one column in the middle here and move this column down to here. And let's do a slanted column again. And we're gonna click here and kind of click up to that point. Click here, click up to that point. And then do the same over here. And just looking in our right view here. So let's just bring these up a little bit. I think this one is okay to snap there. Sometimes I avoid the snapping just because we don't always want it to snap, but there's like a point on the corner of that intersection. So let's do the same with this. Let's make it start at level seven. And on this side, because it's it's uh, maybe not necessarily gonna impact our our height, maybe we could go a little bit lower, maybe five feet to make it a bit more dramatic. And we'll do the same over here. Make this top constraint level one, five feet. And so now we kind of have this tree-like look on this side. And I think that's kind of cool uh, from an architectural perspective because now you're kind of exposing these tree-like columns on the interior as well. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna make this back to full view here. Um, so we've done a few columns, I'm not gonna do all of them right now, but you can kind of see how that works. Um, <clears throat> now we have these windows. Um, the first thing I'm just going to note with these windows, they are actually inside out. So let's just hit our space button. And so we want our, our piece of glass to be the exterior. Uh, but I don't think these windows really work for this situation. And so I think the best course of action is curtain wall here. I hesitate kind of showing curtain wall systems early on when you're learning Revit, because I think they're they're good and sometimes not good in certain situations because they, they do a little bit too much for you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this wall here and we're gonna use the break tool or the split tool. And we're just gonna split this wall um, into a few portions here. And I'm gonna split it a little bit back from the edge here and do the same on this side. And then do the same on this corner here. And um, again, we're going to break this one just a little bit on either side here and there, I think this will be the last one over here. I think the rest is doors. So, um, let's just delete our windows now. Oh, I don't want to click that. Click no. Uh, we're just going to delete our windows now. I think we can actually just select all instances visible in view. Yeah, that should be fine. So delete those. Now we're going to select our wall portions that we broke here. 
And the cool thing about this is when we use a curtain wall system, it, it basically aligns in the same orientation of that wall below. So let's uh, grab this and we'll make this uh, curtain wall storefront system. Um, there's a couple things I hear I recommend with storefronts. Um, I mean, one is if you wanted to have a bit of a sill at the bottom, um, you could also raise these up. Um, but I think um, a couple things I recommend with curtain walls just before we go into that would be, right now this is a storefront. I usually create a couple, so we'll do storefront, um, no mullions. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do this one first, uh, perimeter, perimeter only. I don't know if I, uh, yeah. Um, and so we're just gonna delete the interior ones here. And we're gonna actually turn off the grid. Uh, I'm gonna rename this perimeter only. And I'm just to uh, be a little much more specific, I'm gonna say no grid. And we're gonna click okay. It's gonna ask us if we wanna delete some stuff. We're gonna just click okay for a second. Um, and then I'm gonna do another one. Uh, perimeter only, no grid. Actually, let's just, yeah, let's leave it at that for a second. So the reason why I like this is when we change this to be perimeter only, no grid, we can actually have some control over the actual, um, she's in the tab button to grab that. We have we can have some control over um, our mullion locations. So let's go perimeter, no grid. And what we can do now is I can tab over the center of this and grab this grid line and move it over to make it more dramatic. And then we could also delete this top grid line because it's kind of, there is not really doing much. So we can have control over our mullion location. Um, and we can also delete some of these top perimeter ones. I'm gonna leave that one there, leave that one there. Uh, but again, you can just, you can use that however you want, but it, it allows you to have some more control of your system here. Um, in this, in this door over here, if the student wanted to actually utilize this for um, a big operable door, uh, what we can do here is we can grab these curtain mullions here. Actually, I'm gonna hit space on this mullion and move the glass to the outside. Um, you can actually delete or remove a segment of a grid. And so we can actually remove the bottom part of this grid here. And we can do the same over here. We can remove the bottom and do the same here. I'm just gonna use shift tab to go back, remove segment. So maybe we want all of these segments to have, uh, to be one open big door, I guess. So let's grab these mullions on the bottom. Um, usually your door will have an integrated sill. And so when you do that, you want to delete these bottom mullions. So I'm gonna unpin that, delete it. And we can take this big piece of glass here and we can replace that with some other type of um, uh, window. So let's go to bimobjects.com. This is one of my favorite websites for finding good Revit families. Um, there's a company called Solar Innovations. N -O -N -O -Innovations. And I just like to recommend this because I know they have Revit families. And let's just type in this curtain wall door. Um, so I know they have curtain wall doors. And so we wanna make sure we select one that actually says curtain wall. So let me just look down here. Uh, multi-track, multi-slide, multi-track sliding door. Um, I think I want a, let me just go to brand. I'm just gonna select the brand here of Solar Innovations just so we can get rid of a lot of the other ones that we don't need to see. Multi-track, 
glass sliding door multi track. I want to make sure it says curtain wall. And so it might also help just to go to their page. So I'm just going to go pick on one of these doors for a second. I might go to their product page up here. View all products. Okay, so it was in there. All panel, double dutch door. Categories, let's go to doors. Actually, I wonder if it is under a wall because it's a curtain wall. Yeah, so it might be under wall. Glass. Having luck finding the right one here. Let's change this to doors. Try this. Uh, let's just try this one here and see if it works. Let's download. I want to log in, so I'm just going to log in with my account here. Yeah, so, yeah, this one will work. It should work anyways. So we'll just click it to open it. Upgrade. Load into project and close. Let's see if this works. And it's not going to work. Okay. Um, the reason why I know it's not going to work is it needs to be, it won't let you insert um, a curtain wall one in a door. You need to actually replace the panel. Let me just see if I can find a different one. Mm. Curtain wall panel. Let's just do this again. Curtain. The reason why I know they have it is because I have it in my uh, my library. But um, let me just Let's see. Let's see if we can find one. I'm just going to pause this and let me find one here. All right, so I'm back here. Um, I don't know why, but it seems like they've either removed or um, hidden um, these ones. So I went to the Solar Innovations website, and they have these doors here that say in system um, down here. And so any of these doors work. So if we click it, we'll download it. Um, once it's downloaded, we'll double click and load this into our project. And we could download the other ones as well if we wanted to. Load into project and close. Upgrade. And in order for this door to work, you will need to have this mullion at the top. But I think it also works anyways because when you have sloping and all that kind of stuff going on at the same time, it could get uh, potentially uh, complicated. So let's grab this. And to replace a curtain wall, we want to click the glass. And we want to go up to this new solar innovations door. And now we have a sliding door within our curtain wall system. All right, um, just a couple more things I want to touch on. Um, graphics. So, you know, we we have our floor plan right now. 
if you look at a lot of architectural drawings in magazines and 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 stuff like that you'll see a lot of uh what we call a poche or a shaded in wall system and so there's a few different ways of doing that but i think the best way is to actually go to visibility graphics or vg on the keyboard we're going to go down to the bottom here to our wall system and we're going to add a cut pattern of solid black um, and you could do solid gray or or whatever um, i just i think it's nice to have some sort of color and you can see instantly that this drawing pops quite a bit more just because of that solid fill um, last thing i want to show is just a good technique for getting drawings out of revit uh, right now i mean you could obviously go up to file and you can go to export and you can export um, these files as a image but it kind of it doesn't have the same i guess quality and so what i usually recommend doing is going to here and going to sheet and creating a new title block um, but let's let's load in a proper title block first let's go to load autodesk family and we're going to go to our title blocks at the very bottom here and we want to load in 11 by 17. Um, if you don't see 11 by 17 here you can click this globe and change your settings to us imperial and you'll see 11 by 17 there so let's load that in let's click right click on our sheets here we're going to go to new sheet and we're going to click our B 11 by 17 horizontal. And so here I'm going to create two title blocks. So I'm going to double click and edit this title block. We're going to keep this exterior border. So I'm just going to grab it and pin it for a second. Um, and then I'm just going to click down here and turn off pins. So now we can't touch that exterior border. Um, I'm going to keep a uh, project name. Um, keep project name and sheet name for a second and I'm going to delete the rest and I sometimes like to keep this drawing number here so we'll keep that for a second um, and maybe we'll just grab both of these and we're going to change both of these to have a right horizontal orientation and that way they can just kind of line up on the side here in the corner so this is one way to do the title block super simple you have your project name your sheet name and um, you could also do you could have your name here i think that would probably be also good so let's go to text and let's just add a text field here your name or let's do first name last name and change this to right orientation just so we can get it to lock up on the right there and Let's get, get a bit more of a margin down there. So maybe a little bit more space. Um, and let's load into project and close. Let's save this. Um, I think it's good to get in the habit of saving this and building your own library. So um, let me just save this for a second here. So let's just save this with a name. So I just, I'm gonna write 11 by 17, um, or let's write GBC or something like that. Um, so that's, that's one title block there. Um, we can just click our title block now, click this drop down in the properties and just change that to our GBC one. Um, so let's go to edit again. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna remove all the text period. And I'm going to go to File, Save As. And we're going to call this, um, I'm going to make this capitals actually. We're going to call this No Text. I find this is just a really nice title block so that um, you can have minimal export to um, InDesign or Photoshop or whatever you're working on. So let's drag over our level one here, place it on this sheet. Uh, we can actually do a rotation on sheets. So let's rotate counterclockwise. Increase the scale of this. So let's increase the scale to maybe 50. Um, we can also uh, get rid of this title if we want. So we can go up here to viewport line with title, change that to no title. 
If you don't have a no title option, we can click edit. We can click duplicate and call this uh, uh, no title two. And we can change the title to say no. And we can click OK. And that title's gone. And then, so you can do this with all your views, and you just kind of have this blank um, title block. We can go up here to PDF export. This is a new feature in Revit 2022, I believe. And I think it just also helps with doing this. Uh, we want to export our views and sheets. We want to click edit, and we're going to click uh, uncheck our views, and we're going to just select our sheet here. Let's click select. Um, we could also save this and call this sheets. And then uh, we want to change our export settings to be 11 by 17. We want it to be 100% zoom. This is very critical, 100% zoom and center. And now when we go to export this, um, we haven't selected any sheets. All right, let's click this. Make sure our sheets are selected. And let's click export. And now we're, our floor plan is going to kind of fill this sheet. And when we bring it into InDesign or Photoshop, it becomes a vector based drawing. So it's, you know, very low in terms of size, in terms of uh, uh, it's, uh, it's physical document size. And it's, it's just a little bit easier to work with, especially if you're working with InDesign. Um, and now just looking at this, we just have Sorry, I clicked the wrong one here. Why is this not letting me? Uh, is this the right one? No, that's not the right one. Where did it save this? It's being saved. Oh, it's being saved in my documents. Okay, just give me one second here. Let's find this in documents. There we go. So now we just have a very clean drawing here that we can bring into any of those other softwares. So that's a few things just to look at. Um, I'm going to go through a few more students here. So um, yeah. Thanks everyone for watching. Let me know if you have questions.